Hey Ricky, are you ready to hit the road again? Oh yeah, let's go. All right, sounds great. Hi everybody, I'm Lauren Davis. Welcome to RV Destinations, the show that features the wonderful world of RVing. If you've traveled the world in an RV, then you know the fun and adventure that I'm talking about. But if you've never traveled the world in an RV, whew, boy, you are in for a treat. So sit back and relax while we do the driving. We have a great show for you today. We will be traveling the National Road to a 4th of July parade in the little town of Catonsville, Maryland. We'll travel west from there to find out what makes Ellicott City one of the treasures of Howard County. Visit the b and Railroad Museum in Ellicott City, Maryland. Meet the county executive, and if that's not enough, We'll make our third stop at Fort Frederick with a food stop at a little diner that the locals swear by. So stay tuned for a great adventure as we tour the historic National Road. RV Destinations is brought to you by Leo's Vacation Center. There's no better place to shop RVs. Start your vacation at Leo's RV. Before we hit the road, my friend Craig is going to show us a few things to check before getting underway. Thank you, Lauren. Hello, my name is Craig. I'm with Leo's Vacation Center. Been here for 31 years. I've seen a lot in my 31 years. Today, we are going to prep you for a trip on this nice motorhome, and we're gonna start underneath the hood here, and we're gonna work our way around. Here, we have your overflow for your radiator. You have a minimum and max, and this is exactly where you wanna be. If you go below the minimum line, you can add a little bit of water to bring it back up. The next thing we have here is your uh, brake fluid. It's nice and clear, which is good. All you do is take the cap off, go back to the fill line and you're all set. In the event that we pull our dipstick and realize that we need to put some oil in, we'll reinstall this, take the cap off here, and that's where you fill the oil and it is 5W30 or 4. Here we have your power steering fluid and we have a minimum maximum line there. And here we have your windshield washer fluid. Unlike your car, your RV needs to be checked more frequently because you're going to be taking longer trips. So we need to check all the fluids underneath the hood and especially your windshield wiper fluid because you have a larger windshield. As I put the hood down, you'll be able to see that that's a lot larger than what you're accustomed to. Folks, if I can help you any more, you can email me at craig at leosrv.com. Have a wonderful camping trip. Thanks, Craig. Now that our camper is ready to go, let's travel with RV Destinations on a tour of the National Road as it winds westward through the state of Maryland. This historic byway was the first federally funded highway built by the government. The year was 1806. Our nation was still new when the vision of our first president, George Washington, came to fruition. With the approval of then-President Thomas Jefferson, Congress authorized construction of this road which still exists today along the main streets of many quaint American towns. You might know this road as Frederick Road, Route 40, Baltimore National Pike, or Route 70. Come with us on our National Road Tour and join us on our first stop, a 4th of July celebration in the patriotic town of Catonsville, Maryland, where folks just don't seem to care if it rains on their parade. The parade rolls here in Catonsville, regardless, as long as it isn't lightning, we continue. It doesn't make no difference. It's not raining to the people sitting here, I'll guarantee, and it's not sitting to, it's not raining to the people that's, that's in the parade. It's, it's all good. I mean, I'm here in a car, no windshield, no nothing, and we're here and we're going to make this happen. It's 70 years and it gets better every year. You know, this is the best parade in all of Maryland that I'm in right now. Look at the turnout in the pouring rain. God bless America. A sense of community, tradition, unity, and fun are key in this middle American town located not 10 miles from Fort McHenry, where Francis Scott Key wrote our national anthem. In that hour of deliverance and joyful triumph, my heart spoke. 
Does not such a country and such defenders of a country deserve a song? Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? Yes, Francis Scott Key on the other end of the National Road in Fredericktown. That's where he was born. That's where his body lives today. His soul took flight in Baltimore town. I was just telling my girlfriend on the phone that it has got been all my childhood memories were the 4th of July. My parents loved coming to the parade. They've both passed now. And one of the last memories I have with my mother was four years ago, she had a stand up by, um, say, uh, by a church up the street and she, we had a great day. We had a great day. She passed away a month later and it was, my mother was all about the 4th of July parade in Catonsville. I love parades and it's all about being part of the community, getting out here with people that enjoy the same kind of things and celebrating the 4th of July. Oh my gosh, this is what America is all about, Catonsville. Oh, well my husband's family has uh, grown up and born and raised in Catonsville, Maryland, and when we inherited his grandmother's house, we took on a tradition. We got to enjoy every day for today, and in the rain, in the shine, it doesn't matter. You have to have fun. It doesn't matter where, you, where you're from, what your origins are, what the color of your skin is. Everybody's here to have fun, and, and in a small community like this, I mean, I don't know how many other communities have chairs out, you know, two weeks in advance or three weeks in advance to set up for it, but... It's just, it's part of Catonsville. Oh, uh, wait, let's rewind a bit here. What's this about chairs? I moved to Catonsville about five years ago, and you hear the rumors of the Catonsville 4th of July parade and the, the chairs. It's just called Frederick Road Chairs, and every year I think it gets earlier and earlier, um, and people put their chairs out throughout the whole parade route, I think three weeks, four weeks out even. Um, last year they had two dummies out, which reappeared this year. One year they um, had the gigantic toilet seat. That's, yep, that's right. Big gigantic toilet. It, I mean, people get it creative. It used to be that the chairs would show up the night before, um, but now that's two weeks out, they show up. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner still wave? You gotta go red, white, and blue for the Catonsville Parade, because you have to be patriotic. It's all about our country. We live in a great country. And we have to support it. We can even do it in the rain. You know, Fourth of July, we've got a wonderful crowd here, even in the rain. It's great pride. Are you proud of Catonsville? Always. Life is great in 21228. I'm Kathy from Clear Spring Country Diner. And don't you touch that turner. Leave that remote alone. Because when we come back, boy, do I have a surprise for you there's going to be something special, warm and cool that you'll want to see. I'm sorry, I'm on duty right now. I can't tell you what I can tell you about Civil War history here in Ellicott City, but if you come back later, I'll be happy to tell you all about it. We'll be right back after these messages. Shop hundreds of new and pre-owned RVs. Thanks to our selection of the nation's top RV brands and great prices, we've been named a top 50 RV dealership in America, and we are Maryland's number one RV dealership. Great deals await, like new motorhomes starting at 59,900, fifth wheels starting at 32,900, and travel trailers starting at 12,900. Plus, get our lifetime warranty, Leo's RV. There's no better place to shop RVs. Start your vacation at Leo's RV. Stop, a quaint and charming little town that grew from the vision of three brothers, the Ellicotts. What is there to see and do in Ellicott City? Who better to tell us than the county executive, Alan Kittleman? Hi, I'm Alan Kittleman, 
the Howard County Executive. Welcome to Ellicott City, the second stop on your national road tour. And Howard County is the center, or I like to say the heart of Maryland. It's the only county in Maryland that doesn't touch the Chesapeake Bay or another state. So you have to come through Howard County if you're traveling through Maryland. And when you come through, please stop. It's a great place to be. We have 12 restaurants, over a dozen restaurants, from fine dining to more casual. It's a great place for the family, great place for young folks to come and enjoy themselves. Uh, we have great festivals here. We have a spring festival, a fall festival, music festivals, where we have multiple stages. Uh, it's an awesome place to come. Uh, there's never a dull moment here in Ellicott City, so hopefully you'll come and enjoy with your family and your friends. So you can't go wrong if you come to Howard County. Uh, we'll treat you well, and we'll ask you to stay. We can't stay, but it sure sounds like an exciting place to visit. Lots of things for an RV or to see and do, but first, Let's visit Main Street to fuel up on some simply delicious food at a beautiful restaurant that comes highly recommended, La Palapa Grill and Cantina. This is actually one of my favorite dishes. This is our Mexican salad, um, and this is going to be, this has got a, a, a salmon filet on there. It comes with a couple of shrimp. It's really quite fresh and, and, and perfect for, you know, the summertime. It's July right now, and as you know, it's quite hot outside, so this is like the perfect, you know, lunch or, 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 or dinner meal. Um, but we specialize in traditional Mexican cuisine. We have, we do mole, uh, we have tamales, we do different kinds of taquitos, chile rellenos. Um, some of our signature items, you know, are going to be fajitas. We do the fajitas as well. Uh, but yeah, we specialize in traditional Mexican cuisine. Fajitas, tamales, taquitos, delicioso. So tasty. And now that we're all fueled up, it's time to meet our tour guide, Mayor Ed Lilly. At least, we hear he's the mayor. Anyway, if Ellicott City had a mayor, it would be Ed. Now we're at our main claim to fame, the B&O Railroad Museum, the oldest surviving train station in America. First place you could ride as a passenger on a train in America was from Baltimore to Ellicott's Mills then, Ellicott City today. The room we're looking at right here is the first room in our tour of the uh, Ellicott City B&O Railroad Museum. And this is the freight agent's living quarters. Um, it could be the freight agent and a wife and maybe up to two children uh, would take up this space and this is where they would do their cooking in the, in the fireplace. Um, they slept in the bed, the children had a mattress that they would pull out from under the bed. Uh, but this was where the day-to-day -day life of the freight agent would, uh, would take place. Freight agent was responsible for uh, receiving and shipping freight in and out of the station. This room that we're looking at right now was the superintendent's office. Um, he was in charge of constructing the railroad from here beyond uh, to Frederick and beyond that out to Ohio. Uh, eventually this room became the ladies waiting room. Uh, the men in the, it was really at the request of the ladies because the gentlemen sometimes had colorful language, they were spitting tobacco, the ladies didn't want their dresses dragging in that tobacco juice on the floors. So they had their separate waiting room. Thousands of Union troops came through this station during the Civil War, and many of the wounded who succumbed to their injuries decided to make their permanent residence inside the museum. At night, they often make their presence known. for us to jump back on the National Road to talk to Virginia Frank of the National Road Association. Hey Virginia, what's the lowdown on those Ellicott brothers? There were three brothers. They were Quaker brothers who came from Pennsylvania and they came to Howard County which was on the Patapsico River and they decided to set up a mill to grind wheat. So they wanted to get their wheat into Baltimore so they built a road into Baltimore from Ellicott Mills. So this road grew. It went all the way up to Frederick. The road from probably Frederick on up to Cumberland was laid along the Indian trails. There were a lot of Indians up in that area, up in the, the mountains up in that area, so they followed a lot of the Indian trails to build the road. Of course, the trails were very small and they had to widen the road. And then, because it was federally funded, it was called the National Road. There's one more location to explore before we hit the road in our RV, and that's a one-room schoolhouse that was in use possibly until the 1920s. 
John Frank of the Living Farm Heritage Museum is going to meet us there and tell us a little bit about it. Uh, this facility, part of the structure that we're here right now is a, is a part of the infrastructure that our community would have had and this is our one room schoolhouse. It's meant to depict the, uh, a schoolhouse that would have covered a range of classes from first grade through sixth, seventh, eighth grade and right on up to the twelfth grade. So there were many one room schoolhouses throughout the country. In Howard County, Maryland, they existed until approximately in the 1920s, middle of the 1920s. You'll see a lot of different examples of many of the different types of desks that would have been in a one-room schoolhouse and even in other types of schools as time went on. There's so much more to see and do here at the Living Farm Heritage Museum, we couldn't cover it all. We just scratched the surface. So Frank, how can we find out more information? We know you're traveling the historic National Road today, and we really appreciate you stopping by the Howard County Living Farm Heritage Museum. We've only shared a few things about what we can offer here to visitors and what they can experience when they come to see the museum. If you want to find out more about what you can do here, you can visit us at www.farmheritage.org or friend us on Facebook. Thanks again as you travel the historic National Road, and we wish you the best. Bye now. Hi folks, I'm Tony Cordo. You've had a chance to check out some really cool stops down here in Ellicott City, including the B&O Railroad Museum and Executive Kittleman telling you all about the awesome things happening around town. But there's a lot of secrets here in Ellicott City and a lot to do that you haven't seen yet. From our awesome Firehouse Museum and Shakespeare in the Park, to some of my favorite events like the Spirits Tour or Ghost Tours that happen every weekend down here in Ellicott City. Get an opportunity to walk down, check out all the historic hot spots and get real scared at the same time. Who doesn't love that? But this is a great place to come visit. But your first stop should be right here at the Welcome Center, located downtown. Learn about the different things to do around town, and in fact, use it as your gateway to all of Maryland. We've got brochures and great staff, and we want you to stop here in Ellicott City. You came at the right time today. We have something really good in store for you. We have homemade cream of crab soup with big lumps of crab in it. We have juicy, crispy, hot fried chicken mashed potatoes with gravy, and homemade coleslaw. And if that wasn't enough, we're going to give you fresh baked black raspberry pie warmed up with vanilla ice cream. I can see your mouth drooling now. Shop hundreds of new and pre-owned RVs. Thanks to our selection of the nation's top RV brands and great prices, we've been named a top 50 RV dealership in America, and we are Maryland's number one RV dealership. Great deals await, like new motorhomes starting at 59,900, fifth wheels starting at 32,900, and travel trailers starting at 12,900. Plus, get our lifetime warranty. Leo's RV, there's no better place to shop RVs. Start your vacation at Leo's RV. Our RV has taken us on some wonderful adventures. We've met some awesome people and discovered many interesting facts about the towns and cities along the National Road in Maryland. Today, our RV has taken us to Big Pool, Maryland, near Clear Spring. You know, in Washington County, Maryland, not too far from Hagerstown Outlets. Shopping, oh, now you know. Next time you're out here, sure you're going to stop at the outlet stores, but don't just stop to shop, set up camp, slow down, spend some time in the outdoors, and just listen. And visit a gem of a state park, Fort Frederick. Ranger Lieutenant and Park Manager Angie Hummer will be glad to see you. Hi folks, how are you doing today? I've noticed that you've traveled here in an RV and you've been to Catonsville, you've been to Ellicott City, and now you've traveled west to Washington County, Maryland, where you're going to be treated to a gem of Fort Frederick State Park, which is uh, one of the Maryland National Historic Landmarks. We have a 18th century fort that you can go inside and see everything there is to do in 18th century life. We have fishing, we got camping, we have hiking, we're a great place to go bird watching. You can also see a lot of wildflowers here in the park. 
So we're a great place you know, to bring your family and friends and you can enjoy yourself all weekend long and your kids and your family will go home tired on Sunday. Let's go inside this fort, which was used to protect the frontiersmen during the French and Indian War and later used to house British prisoners during the Revolutionary War. Today, the first order of business is raising the flag to the tune of Chester, our first national anthem. Uh, the first national colors of the United States, official. Um, of course, we had several other flags before this. Try to sing the song yeah. as, as the music is played. This is our first national anthem. It has the amazing name of Chester. Why it's called Chester is beyond me, but this was first written in 1778, so it's very appropriate for our fort. So yes, there was something before the Star Spangled Banner. So from 1778 to 1789, Chester was our national anthem. Then it was Hail Columbia, and then of course, eventually becomes the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> smoothbore musket. It has an accurate range of about 60 yards. So roughly from here to the far corner of that barracks is about the length of what it's going to shoot in um, accurately. Yeah, it'll go further. Yeah, you might be able to hit something further if you know what you're doing. But in a massed line infantry battle like many of the battles here in North America were in the revolution, that's your maximum range. It's the command is going to be make ready, present, and fire. I don't think we want to tangle with him, RVers. So let's take cover at the barracks and discover how to make an essential piece of a soldier's equipment, the powder horn. You'll never guess what it's made from. I'm working on a powder horn out of a, take a horn off of a cow and you scrape it down to what you want and you boil it and shape it to this, what you want. And you put a plug in the end and you can keep your powder in here. Uh, cow horn is basically the first plastic because you can heat it and shape it any way you want. Tell us, what was life like for an 18th century militiaman? It's what you get used to. I mean, sometimes it's bad to be without your family, but uh, a lot of the soldiers, they have, are Militiamen, they had their families close by. Actually, my wife and kids live across the river, so I can go home. My name is Matthew, I'm a Star Wars interpreter here for the Maryland Park Service. We dress like this for the first half hour a day, but we interpret history by living it. Uh, so part of the uniform of a Highlander is the belted plaid, which is 16 feet of wool. It is kind of the typical kilt for that image. But it's also a blanket. If I bring it up over my shoulders on my head, it's a cloak. I've even heard some people using it as a tent. So it's a kind of universal garment. Uh, after the rising of 45, they are banned for civilians. They see it as immoral as walking around in your bedclothes. And they also say that it's easier to do a rebellion if you're wearing your bed. Hey RVers, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see why he was captured. You try running while wrapped in 16 feet of wool. Let's run back to our campsite, relax, and chat a bit with some of our neighbors, sisters Carrie and Sissy, and maybe share a few camping stories. I'm on oxygen 24-7, two liters, so that's a good bet. I've lost 40% in the of my lungs. But up here, I can go all day. It's the quality of the air, I guess all the trees and everything, and it's, it's just amazing that I can run around and not have to have a hose stuck to me all the time. It's calming, it's relaxing, it's quiet. You don't hear the traffic. You know, it's just, I just love it up here. I love camping, plain and simple. I'd rather camp than be at home any time. <laughs> I'm with her, I love it. This is my third time up here with her, and just, 
the quality of the nature in this park. You, you see the rabbits, you see the squirrels, the possums, the raccoons, the red birds, the blue birds, the hummingbirds. Uh, in the morning, it is so pretty to wake up to their singing. It's gorgeous. And you don't get that in town. You don't get stars like you get here, you know? And it, it's just fantastic. I, I love it, I really do. You won't find nicer folks than Sissy and Carrie, but that's what camping is all about. Speaking of cooking, there's a diner in Clear Spring that has the best cream of crab soup in the state of Maryland. And I'm picky about my crab soup, y'all. So before we turn in for the night, my RV friends, let's stop by the family-operated Clear Spring Country Diner to see what Kathy McKinley's got cooking on the stove. Most people come in for cream of crab soup. And we have to keep that on the menu every day. We make three gallon about every other day. It was just a recipe that I had found in a book, made it, and it didn't quite taste right, and then you just kind of tweak it and let other people taste it and see what it needs, and now I could almost make it in my sleep. I make it so often. No written down recipes or anything. It's all in your head. You don't have to measure. You just go by the looks of it. And what's your secret, Kathy? Come on, you can tell us. What makes your crab soup so divine? The important thing is you have to use real butter. Wait, hold on, Kathy. Don't give it all away now. And when you put the crab meat in at the very end, you don't put it in while you're whisking and stirring. You break it up softly so the crab meat doesn't fall apart. And then you fold it through the soup. And that way the crab meat stays in chunks. And that's what the people like chunks of crab meat in their soup, not all flaked up. Guys, what a great show. There's so many things you can see and do when you go RVing. We want to take you to as many places as we can. Remember, visit us at our website at www.rvdestinations.tv. Facebook us, tweet us, or simply contact me at lauren at leosrv.com. Hey Ricky, hey Bill, are you guys ready to go to our next destination? Let's go. Let's go. RV Destinations is brought to you by Leo's Vacation Center. Shop hundreds of new and pre-owned RVs. Thanks to our selection of the nation's top RV brands and great prices, we've been named a top 50 RV dealership in America, and we are Maryland's number one RV dealership. Great deals await, like new motorhomes starting at 59,900, fifth wheels starting at 32,900, and travel trailers starting at 12,900. Plus, get our lifetime warranty. Leo's RV, there's no better place to shop RV. Start your vacation at Leo's RV.